day, Wargamers. Welcome back to the channel, Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron, and we're back with another awesome mech review. This one, the Assassin ASN21, courtesy of our subscriber, Litany Against Fear. So thank you uh, for this mech review recommendation. So the Assassin, I like it. I mean, it's super cool looking. It's fast, um, but the arsenal just is so weird. SRM-2, LRM-5, medium laser. Obviously the SRM-2 pairs with the medium laser. The LRM-5 is sort of an outlier. None of these weapons on their own tend to do a lot of damage. Uh, it's a 40 ton mech. It's, uh, it's got decent armor on it. Uh, so how's it gonna stand up? I don't know, let's find out. Stay tuned. All of our Battleytics numbers are coming at you in just a second. All right, so let's get the review of the Assassin started. So the ASN-21 is the variant we're looking at today. Uh, this is an Intersphere medium mech. Uh, it is a 40-ton mech. It has a battle value of 749. So a little history on this mech. Uh, it was produced all the way back in 2676, so that was basically a Star League era. And it persisted. This particular variant persisted through basically every era up until the Jihad, and um, it sort of was deprecated, I think, uh, right before the Republic was formed, finally when that variant went extinct. So that's pretty impressive uh, in terms of a lifespan for a particular variant. Now into the statistics. So uh, when you think about the Assassin, you think about the speed first and foremost. This thing is blazing fast, uh, ground speed of 711, which on its own, you know, Jenner, Locust, right? That's all, all these mechs can either beat it or meet it. Um, but what what impresses me is the seven jump jets. I mean, this thing can really get up and over pretty much any obstacle. So that combined with a very high ground speed makes this mech incredibly maneuverable. Um, it has no problem claiming those plus threes and plus fours um, on the on the movement mod there. So um, pretty good. So heat sinks got ten uh, standard equipment across the board. Armor-wise, uh, it's 52.6% coverage. Now, as far as a 40-ton mech is concerned, it's a little bit low. Um, but as far as a mech that can claim these kinds of target mods goes, um, that's pretty impressive, right? So 4.5 tons of armor, armor factor again of 72. Um, that's really good when you combine that with a plus three or plus four target mod. So, um, Overall, you know, it's in good shape. However, the distribution is weird. Um, if we look at that center diagram there, um, you'll notice there's a pretty even distribution across, except for when you get to the legs. The legs are a bit of, basically in a quarter uh, of total armor. I mean, it's woefully under armored. And considering this mech relies on its speed to survive, um, that was something that immediately jumped out to me uh, as a potential risk. So when we get into the defensive simulations, we'll see whether or not um, it's a real risk or not. In terms of weapons and ammunition, so it's got an LRM-5 in the right torso. Uh, it has a medium laser in the right arm. Uh, that arm, incidentally, does not have a hand actuator on the right side there. Um, and then the left torso mounts an SRM-2 launcher. Um, not my favorite weapon, but, you know, it's good for getting crits and, and sort of getting the job done. Um, ammo is stored in the right torso and left torso, respectively. Um, and so basically that is what you get in terms of the Assassin. Now moving on to the offensive benchmarks here. Um, basically what you see with the Assassin is zero capability to build up any heat. Um, all of its weapons are very low heat type of weapons. The only time you're going to generate heat on this mech is if you're alpha striking and jumping successive, successively turn over turn. Um, but again, these offensive benchmarks do not take jumping into consideration. So. What do we see here? So we see a baseline where this mech can start delivering damage with that LRM-5, basically as, as soon as the engagement begins. Um, and then, you know, as it gets closer, obviously it can deal more and more damage. Uh, that LRM-5 uh, will, of course, begin to lose efficiency within seven inches. Um, but overall, you're pretty much looking at across the board uh, an average calculated damage, whether it's baseline or optimized, of 50.9. So. Um, it's not terrible uh, for a light mech, but for a medium mech that's 40 tons, uh, you know, it's not that great. But again, this mech really is sort of a, um, a heavy recon mech. It's really not a striker. Um, it's not designed to do tons of damage. 
Um, and so kind of expected results here. Um, when we go over to the lethality, it's a, it's a little bit of a, of, a, of a comedy story here. I mean, this mech really struggles even to bring down a Javelin, um, which is obviously 10 tons lighter than this mech. It only managed to kill the Javelin 1.2% of the time out of 10,000 simulations. So, you know, let those numbers sink in for a minute. That Javelin walked, um, you know, again, a very, a very high percent of the time. So, um, damage per hit here, some of the metrics we got out of this lethality simulation, it does about 3.5 damage per hit. So you got the, you know, cluster of LRMs, you've got a couple of SRMs, a medium laser, 3.54, eh, it's not great, it's not terrible, it's about average for, um, for most mechs. But again, you know, this mech just doesn't bring a whole lot of damage to the table, period. So average damage per hit sort of a misleading statistic in this particular scenario. Uh, it only generated um, 0.99 critical hits, so less than one critical hit um, per game uh, on average, which, you know, is, again, sort of expected. You, you have one cluster of LRMs, you know, two clusters, right, two missiles on the SRM side, and then the medium laser, so really only four weapons or four potentials um, if you bring everything to bear. Um, but again, it takes so long to peel that armor off with this mech. Um, by the time you get into the internal structure, uh, you know, the game's over, or I mean, potentially you're out of SRM2 ammo. <laughs> um, so time to kill was 35.8 turns. It's the highest I've ever seen. Um, so to kill a Javelin in a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, in this particular simulation, right, projected, it would take 35.8 turns. That's, that's pretty bad. Um, and you can see at the bottom there, I mean, there's almost no growth on any of the kill charts. It just, over 12 turns, just not doing much. So, I mean, not much to say there offensively, but let's take a look at the defensive side. So defensively, it was a little bit of a surprise to me um, in a good way. So firstly, I mentioned earlier about the leg armor and the motive hits. Well, motive hits were only at 21.6%, which is about I would say average for most mechs. There's a couple things going on here. You know, one, you've got those legs packed with jump jets, so you're only at a two-third chance to get a mode of critical when you get through those legs. Um, but more importantly, I think those movement mods play such a huge factor um, in keeping this mech alive. I mean, again, that plus four is on a 2d6 probability curve is astronomical. Um, and so, you know, I think that really played into it. So in the, in the defensive sim, this mech, um, survived 63.9% of the time. It was only killed 36.1% of the time, and that was pretty much evenly split between ammo kills and CT kills. And so for a mech that's packing, um, you know, two tons of ammo on board, that's not bad. Um, and so if you kind of eliminated the ammo dependency or, you know, moved some criticals around or did some things, um, you know, you might be able to, you might be able to eke out a little bit more survivability um, but, you know, again, those, those left and right torsos are pretty well padded out. Um, there's five critical slots in each side, and only one of them is ammo, so it's only a 20% chance, you know, if you do get an internal hit on one of those side torsos that you'll pop the ammo. So, um, overall, I was very impressed with the survivability of this mech. Um, you'll see other mechs, you know, that have uh, similar armor values that just don't have anywhere near um, the level of survivability that this mech has. So, uh, again, overall, pretty impressed with the, with the defensive benchmarks here for the Assassin. So, those defensive stats are really going to help this mech's efficiency. Um, and, you know, as we know, right, the sort of efficiency metric that we derive in the Battlelytics engine is a product of your optimized damage and your survivability. So, the higher your survivability, uh, the more damage you can bring to bear. And so, uh, and so this mech, because it had a 63.9% survivability, doesn't see a massive drop um, from its optimized ACD to its effective ACD. Um, and so we can see in that top effectiveness benchmark, um, there really isn't too much loss. It's actually less than 10% cumulatively um, from a 50.9 to 42.2, which you'll see there on the bottom of your screen in the bar chart. So overall efficiency, so this is a rating of how, uh, how good the mech is in terms of bang for buck for its battle value. This mech clocked in at a 4.03. Um, so most of the mechs that we've been looking at have been in that 5 to 6. A couple of them have, uh, I believe, hit 7. Um, but really, the, the, the 4 is below uh, average there. It's still kind of in the meat of the bell curve. 
um, but a little bit below average, but not as low as honestly I had expected. Um, and again, that's attributed to its high survivability. So you can rely on this mech to run around like a lunatic, lay in some LRMs, try to keep it at long range, uh, you know, like nine inches, eight inches, you know, pound in some SRMs and medium lasers, see what kind of damage you can do. Um, I think this mech uh, could, could really shine there. Now, in terms of gunnery score sensitivity, it was um, a 0.438, so you're not going to really see a good return on investment for upgunning this guy from, you know, a gunnery 4 to 3 to 2 to 1. Um, in fact, you know, I would say probably gunnery 3 is, is where I would want to play this guy because, again, you're going to be at long range. You're going to want to keep this thing, you know, in that long range bracket for its own weapons, the medium and the SRM2, and so you can't just rely on getting to point blank with this mech. I think it's too fragile, um, and I think you're going to, you know, end up getting, you know, capped pretty quickly. So, um, you know, for me, considering it's only 749 battle value, I would definitely consider putting a, a slightly better pilot in. Um, but going beyond a, a gunnery 3 or gunnery 2, you're really not going to see the return on investment. Um, and if you look at that gunnery curve, um, and they all kind of look, you know, again, similar, um, it sort of peaks up around 2, and then it begins to plateau, um, you know, from 2 to 1 and 1 to 0. So really you're seeing in the biggest return, you know, 4 to 3 and then 3 to 2. So... Um, let's talk about roles. Now the first thing we'll do is go over some of the key metrics uh, that came out of our analysis today. So just to recap, optimized ACD. So this was the, you know, the most damage that we were able to do in our 12 turn benchmark. That was 50.9. Uh, our damage per hit was 3.54. Uh, survival rate 63.9%. Not too bad. Our movement, again, this thing's really, uh, really blazing fast. Uh, so seven, 11, and then seven jump as well. Uh, it didn't build up any heat uh, in our uh, offensive benchmarks, right? In order to generate heat, we talked about this, you gotta be jumping with this mech. Um, so it's very easy to just bleed off heat um, if you do get a little bit hot. But considering speed is life for this mech, I would definitely try to avoid movement penalties if possible. Uh, efficiency, 4.03. And then the sensitivity on the gunnery side was 0.438. Um, so how did that all shake out in terms of the report card? Well, offensively, it scored a 1.5. Uh, so again, we talked about this. 50.9 um, isn't terrible. Um, there are mechs that definitely do less damage. Um, but what really, uh, I think, helped this mech in terms of its offensive score is the fact that, you know, it's able to survive a little bit longer um, and bring some of those weapons to bear. The fact that the LRM-5 comes into play almost immediately um, is pretty great. Um, so, you know, this mech can generate a little bit of damage um, over time. You just, again, gotta keep it alive. Uh, defensively, it scored a 3.5, so this is, this is pretty high. I was expecting this mech to be just um, paper thin. I, I, I didn't put as much stock probably as I should have uh, in the movement mod, so that, that panned out pretty well. Mobility, no surprise, 4.5 out of 5. Uh, control, so the ability to, you know, keep the, the heat under wraps, uh, that's a 5 out of 5. Very easy to keep this mech under control. And then efficiency, it was a 2.5 out of 5. So, you know, again, on the bell curve, just a little bit to the left of average, average being, you know, a 3 out of 5. But, um, you know, not terrible. Still, still a mech that I would consider taking. Um, when I play my Assassin, um, I definitely modify it. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, you know, if you're playing our field refit rules, for example, you could swap one of the SRM2s uh, or the SRM2 for an LRM5. Um, you know, there's a couple of goofy things you can do. Um, I like to play that um, that variant with all the small lasers, and then I trade a couple of them up for two mediums, so I run an LRM5 and three mediums, and that's pretty potent. Um, but anyway, uh, for this particular variant, you know, still a pretty good bang for buck, I think, overall. So when we look at the threat assessment at the bottom, um, again, the yellow line represents sort of a ratio of um, how much damage you could do versus how much damage you're likely to do versus how much heat it costs you to do that damage. Um, and so the higher that yellow line it basically represents, you know, a higher threat, right? The more you're able to consistently churn out damage uh, in that bracket. So um, what do we see here? Well, this mech, again, you know, really its sweet spot is, um, you know, in that uh, LRM range, right, where we talked about that, that medium range for LRMs. Um, when it gets into nine, eight, seven, six inches, that's where you see the damage start to climb. Again, it's looking at building up more heat 
at that point in time, which is why you see an efficiency dip there. Um, but you know, ultimately, you can also see uh, the, the dark red alpha strike, you can see that jump up quite a bit, you know, from about five damage all the way up to 14 or so. So, um, you know, the alpha strike potential is really there once you cross that nine inch range. And I think that's probably where I would play this mech. Um, again, it just doesn't have enough of a long range punch to just float it around with one LRM5. There are better mechs to do that with. Um, so again, that nine, eight, seven, six inch range is where I would keep that. I would definitely avoid getting it at point blank range um, for two reasons. One, the LRM5's efficiency uh, drops and you're gonna lose out on the damage. And two, you're just gonna make it that much easier for the mech to get pegged by an enemy. Um, and so, you know, one or two hits, an unfortunate or lucky hit to the leg, and this thing's gonna be out of commission real fast. Um, on the threat envelope side, nothing too surprising there. Has the, you know, the two torso mounted launchers, so everything's really forward facing. And then the one uh, medium laser uh, on that uh, on that arm. So, combat rolls. This is this was something I, I debated on, uh, and some of our other mech reviews we've had s some really good conversation. You guys challenged me on a couple of them, so uh, I appreciate that. It's made me made me think real carefully uh, about how how I pick these. So, um, I got I ended up with two rolls. I couldn't really come up with three for this mech. Um, the first roll really is a recon mech. Um, and when I say a recon mech. You know, what is, how does that translate into a, a tabletop game of Battletech? Um, and, and, you know, when I think about the missions that we play in DFA and some of the other missions that are floating around out there, you know, there tend to be objectives and things like that. This is a great mech that can get in, cap an objective, get out, um, you know, capture the flag type mission, um, a convoy mission where you have to destroy, uh, you know, a specific thing. This thing is so fast and so mobile. You can keep it low, out of sight, using terrain and other things to your advantage you know, jump it up and over buildings, jump it up and over mountains, whatever you need to do. Um, again, really great for that type of objective style mission. Um, this is a good go-to mech for that. Um, and then also as a picket mech. So again, not, not like a Wolverine style where you're just up close and personal at point blank, you know, harassing somebody, um, but just even running interference, screening, um, laying fire in on enemy mechs, you know, just again, stay at that like six to nine inch range. Um, I think this mech can, you know, just be an annoyance. And as long as you keep the speed up, uh, you know, it's either going to draw fire to the point where people are going to be tempted to shoot it, you know, and then they're going to have to waste alpha strikes and shots, you know, uh, against this crazy high mod, or they're going to ignore it. And as we saw on the damage side, you know, it can deal a decent amount of damage. I mean, 50.9 over 12 turns. Uh, it's nothing, again, to write home about, but it's also, you know, four tons of armor. I mean, that's substantial. Could be just what you need, you know, to get those bigger guns through, uh, you know, an enemy heavy target, right? So um, that's how I would use that mech. Again, always uh, very interested in your guys' comments, so I'd love to hear how you would use this. Um, so once again, thank you. Hope you enjoyed this mech review. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments, don't hesitate to leave them. Don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming from Death from Above Wargaming.